Today, we will continue to discuss the passage in chapter 16, Magnetic Fields. By the way, there are limited questions in these three passage paper about this chapter. So I will try to highlight as many formulas as I can to explain to you about what do you need to know about the formulas. As for the theory and derivations, I will just leave it for you to do your own revision. So let's start with the concept of the magnetic force. So we learned about the magnetic force on the point charge is QVB sine theta. Okay, so the angle is the angle between the magnetic field and the velocity. So magnetic force also a centripetal force that causes the charge to move in a circular path, which we will see a few applications later on. So the basic concept is that the magnetic force QVB is equal to the centripetal force mv squared over r. So here we can obtain the radius of the circular path. And then we also learn how to derive from the magnetic force on the point charge to get the force on the current carrying conductors, which is equal to ILB sine theta. So to get the direction of the force, we shall apply the Fleming left hand rule, which you also have learned in the SPM. So let's go to the question in 2022 Ulangan paper. An ion of mass M and charge Q move perpendicularly to a magnetic field at a constant speed. The path of the ion in the magnetic field is should be a circle. And we have derived the formula just now that R is equal to mv over qb. So it is directly proportional to m over q. Okay, answer is A. So there's also a similar question in past year paper 2023. The answer here will be equal to D, which is the circle, which is radius also directly proportional to m over q. We shall move on to past year in 2022, question 9. Conductor PQ of length 50 cm and weight 5 newton is hung at equilibrium by two light strings. PQ is placed in uniform magnetic field of two Tesla at an angle 30 degrees as shown in the diagram. So what is the tension in each string when a constant current I of 4 ampere flows in PQ? So this belongs to the force on current carrying conductors, where we learn the force is ILB sine angle. So just put in all, the val all those values and we can obtain the force is 2 Newton. And then we should apply the Fleming left hand rule to obtain the direction of the force. So you can try on your own and the direction should be in upward direction. So from here, we can see there are two tension, okay, two string, we have two tension and a magnetic force in outward directions. And we have a only one direction in downward, which is the weight of the string, uh, the weight of the conductor itself. So we have two tension plus two equal to five. So the tension in each string is equal to 1.5 Newton, answer is B. And then you shall move on to the next topic, which is about the magnetic field. So here we learn about the Ampere's law, where we use the Ampere's law to derive the magnetic field around a straight wire. So the magnetic field around a straight wire is equal to mu naught i over 2 pi r. And then you don't learn how to derive for the circular coil and the solid knot. You just need to remember the formula. And we have the circular coil is B equal to mu naught n i over 2 r, where the n here is the number of turns, r is the radius of the coil. And as for solenoid, we have mu naught ni, and the n here is the number of turns per unit length. So at the end of the solenoid, it will be only half. Okay, so you just need to remember the formula. We shall continue to discuss the question in 2022 Ulangan paper. Question 10, the string of magnetic flux density at a perpendicular distance r from a straight wire which carries a current is measured. Which graph shows the variation of B with r? So for a straight wire, B is equal to mu naught I over 2 pi R. So it's obvious that B is inversely proportional to the radius, to the distance. So answer will be C. So not many questions here, but there are more questions in section B or C in the past year. So we shall move on to the next topic, which is the force between two current carrying conductors, where you also learn how to derive the formula, where we get the force per unit length is equal to mu naught I1, I2 over 2 pi D. So using the Fleming left hand rule, we have analyzed what is the type of force between the two wires. For the wires that carries the current in the same directions, there is attraction force. And as for wires with the opposite directions, we have repulsion force. Let's go to the question in 2022. We have three parallel long wires RST, each carries current I of the same magnitude in the direction as shown in the diagram. So we can see R and S both are in upward direction and T is in downward direction. So which diagram shows the correct direction of forces that act on the wires if the distance between R and S, distance between S and T are the same? So we shall start to analyze the case. So remember that with the same direction, they attract. With different direction, they repel. So we look at S and T first because they are much easier. So look at T first. So we have the T is ha having a different direction compared to R and S, so it will be repelled to the right. 
support forces is to the right, so the net force is to the right. And as for T, it will be attracted to R, repelled by T. So it has also two forces acting on the left. So the net force on the wire S is also to the left. And as for the wire R, it will be attracted to S, but repelled by wire T. So there are two opposing forces here, so we need to analyze which force is greater. So based on the formula here that the force is directly proportional to the current and inversely proportional to the distance. As we can see that the distance between R and T is much longer compared to the distance R and S. So we can conclude that Fs is larger than Ft. So the net force on wire R is to the left, uh, sorry, to the right. So the answer is D. And then we shall move on to the next topic, which is about the whole effect. So here you also learn how to derive, and there are a few parameters that is uh, may be confusing to you, like the thickness, the width. So you need to go back, revise again, what are the type of the parameters. So we have one of the formulas here, which is VH equal to IB over NET, where the T is the thickness. So I go through one of the passive question in my video discussion. So you may look back if you're still not sure what exists. And we also learn about the application of whole effect where we, it can be used to determine the type of charge carrier, to measure the magnetic field, to determine drift velocity, electron density, which is based on the formula we have. So now let's continue to discuss the question in 2022, question 11. In the whole effect experiment, when a conductor is placed in an uniform magnetic field, the electric field produced is. So you need to re refer back what is going on in the whole effect. So the whole, the whole voltage okay, uh, will induce an electric field. So VH is equal to ED. So the electric field mentioned here is actually because of the whole voltage and they are directly proportional. So first one, inversely proportional to the current, no. Okay, so E is proportional to B and B is directly proportional to the current. B, directly proportional to the magnetic field. Yes, okay, so B is proportional to B, so answer is B. And as for C, inversely proportional to the area of the conductor. Okay, although we don't see the parameter A here, but it actually can be linked to the electron density. Okay, as we know, the electron density will be inversely proportional to the volume or also the area of the conductor. So since electric field is inversely proportional to the electron density, so the electric field should be directly proportional to the area of the conductor. And lastly, directly proportional to the density of the charge carrier. No, okay, it should be inversely proportional as I mentioned in the previous options. So let's move on to the next question, Ulangan paper of 2022, which is not true about the application of the whole effect. So here is quite obvious. Answer is C, measure the specific charge of E to M of the electron. So this one can be done through the Thomson experiment or using the mass spectrometer that I'm going to explain later on. So how effect can be used to measure the magnetic flux density? Yes. Identify the type of semiconductor? Yes. And to measure the density of charge carrier, as what we have discussed just now. And then we move on to the next question in 2023, which is not true about the application of whole effect. Okay, and the answer is, cannot be measured, can, cannot be used to measure the electric field. Okay, so some people will be confused with the previous question, which is in 2022. So the electric field here mentioned here is actually produced, but the thing is that it is not used to measure the electric field. So don't be confused here. So the only things that it measures is the magnetic field, not the electric field. So last but not least, I shall discuss about the determination of the ratio E to M. So I have a video discussion about it and you can refer back, but sometimes we may see a different modified question in exam. So you just need to remember a few basic concepts here and then you do the practice on your own. So the first thing is that in Thomson experiment for the part here, we have the conversion of energy from the electrical potential to kinetic energy. So that's why we have the QB equal to half mv squared. And as for the electric field and magnetic field here, for the charge to move in a straight line, so we need to have the forces in equilibrium that we have Fe equal to Fb, so we have QE equal to QBB. And then in the mass spectrometer, we can see that the point charge will move in a circular path. So this links to the concept that I mentioned earlier that the magnetic force on the point charge is also a centripetal force. So we will have QEB equal to mv squared over r. In short, there's a lot of derivation in this chapter and you need to do a lot of practice on your own. So that's all for this topic and thank you.